Um, now, our next talk, which we'd like to introduce, uh, we'd like to introduce um, our very own uh, Executive Creative Director, Max Pinaz. Um, now, Max, I know him very well. His talks are always life-changing a lot of the time. Max is going to be talking about why virtual fashion is Gen Z driven. Now, a bit of a background, Max is the Creative Director at Dept. Uh, he's a true futurist known for sharing a disruptive view on technology. Um, his main focus is forward thinking, making the impossible possible by imagination and perseverance. Uh, I'll leave you no longer more and I'll hand you over to Max. Enjoy the talk. Hey, thank you, Jake. Uh, can you see my screen? Check. Okay, cool. Uh, well, thanks so much. Uh, that, uh, just now, that was a very impressive talk. And I'm going to extend on it a little bit um, and um, make it more specific about Gen Z and virtual fashion. And I have a, 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 some, uh, some is quite a, like 100% overlap, but there are some differences in Gen Z that I think is a, that are quite interesting. But first, uh, this year, people under 25 will make up 41% of the world's population. Let that sink in because that's a massive, massive number. And um, today I want to talk to you about four things, different cats and kittens uh, that are the Gen Z, some key insights about virtual fashion and a wrapper. So first about these different cats and kittens. A pink elephant, because there is one pink elephant in the room and that's actually me. Because why would I, uh, uh, let's say I wouldn't, I won't even go <laughs> by saying my age, but um, a, a Gen X talk about uh, Gen Z. And that's kind of, that's a fair question. Because uh, if I uh, would talk about uh, these uh, Gen Zs and I would think about what I like, I would say like, oh, they'll go like uh, virtual garments, virtual fashion. Uh, they will. Uh, they would want to uh, dress them up uh, digitally, and then um, buy some digital clothes and put themselves on, uh, on, for example, IG. But to be honest, if you look at that, there are so many things that are wrong with it. So they are quite transparent and open. So if you would ask a Gen Z, would you put yourself digitally uh, on uh, IG? They would go like, yeah. If I put in a disclaimer that this that it is not real because otherwise it's fake. And also I showed it to a couple. They said like, I'm not gonna pay for it. So it's it's a quite a different group. These are two Gen Z's, uh, Justin, uh, he's 13 years old and Noam, he's 63 years old. And um, these are my sons. So I uh, talked uh, this whole uh, talk with them too. And um, Noam said, well, I represent the brand, so I needed to point out that he was always uh, wearing uh, Depth Apparel, but I want to focus a bit on Justin. So Justin, this is him in his uh, Tommy Hilfiger uh, getting some ice cream. And I want to tell you a small story about this uh, Hilfiger uh, uh, hoodie. So he went on YouTube to learn some stuff. Then he uh, downloaded the free uh, 3D program Blender, then he in installed via my depth account, Photoshop. Yeah, sorry. Then he went on TikTok and he, he did a promotion about, I can make stuff for you guys. Um, then he talked to an admin on a Discord server. I want to have an e-commerce uh, shop on your server because you have a lot of Roblox uh, gamers there. And then he started selling avatars, customized through everything he learned. Uh, on this Discord server for people to use as avatar uh, within uh, the Roblox domain. So I was, he was explaining all of this to me and he said, yeah, I can make money with it and I pay additional stuff in, in Roblox for it, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, when did you do all of this? And he said, yeah, over the weekend, I learned myself, blah, 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 blah. So did, this, uh, this is a perfect example of what I think a Gen Z actually is. Um, and if you look into Roblox, I have a small example here of Hyundai that did a coll collab with, uh, with Roblox. So I have something to say about it because when I was looking at it, I thought like, so, well, that's my personal preference to be honest, but rock, 
rock music, really. Uh, if you look it up, the Gen Z preference above the, the normal average is plus 80% on rap, urban, hip hop, and indie pop. Parents in a movie for these kids, salespeople in the movie, uh, the whole uh, thing map was called the future of mobility. So these people don't think in these terms. So it was a bit of a strange example of a brand actually making a great effort, but the execution was a bit weird to me. Um, and if you then would look at, for example, fans, they did the following. I thought that was way cooler because they are actually doing something these kids like to do, uh, like for example, skateboarding. Uh, they adjusted to a part of the game dynamic specifically for this promotion. And they were wearing uh, clothing that actually is something they would like to wear themselves. So this was a really cool example of doing exactly the same thing as you, as you and I, but then actually thought about the people using it. So uh, Gucci also came by by the previous presentation. I think this one is really interesting. Uh, this, this bag uh, you could buy for 350 Robux and uh, to the current uh, exchange rate, that's about $4. Uh, if you now go and buy this uh, bag uh, second-handed, it will cost you about 1,300 pounds. Um, and if you would have bought it new, even uh, a little bit more. However, this digital version resold for about 350,000 Robux, uh, uh, equal, the, what equals about $4,000. So it's quite insane to see like how the digital and the virtual uh, uh, compares to uh, the physical domain. And the same thing is going on in other environments. So Gucci is really a front runner. They're doing uh, stuff in Pokemon. But what I like is this example at the bottom right even more. This is um, in uh, SimCity and this is actually built by uh, the community themselves. So this is a real good example of how people like to interact in these worlds, uh, not only with brands, but do it themselves. And that brings me to the following uh, quote that I really love. The funny thing is the real world is just the part-time metaverse. And to me, the, so everybody that's not Gen Z, probably everybody in this call, um, we are sort of always in the physical domain and popping in the digital domain. And for the Gen Z, it's almost the other way around. They are they live quite a lot uh, in the in the digital domain, and they uh, sometimes pop out to get some food or go to the bathroom. This was a statement by uh, Virtual Blah, and he's uh, uh, a CEO of uh, Off White and also creative director at uh, Gucci for the menswear uh, department. And he's seen like sort of the millennial Karl Lagerfeld, and it's really cool because. You're seeing these really influential people in fashion thinking about these next uh, next steps and really making sort of the shift from the physical stuff to the digital, but also recognize that there still is a, a, a physical part in it. So uh, what, he, what he was saying was screenware is sort of the new streetwear because we spend so much time in front of it as Gen Z. And these are some, some examples it already passed by in the previous pre presentation, but what I like so much about this is that you have the physical version and you have the digital version. I think this is actually what Gen Z, Gen Z really like, how that they can represent themselves in different ways, both digitally as physically. So there is a thing though, wearing your outfit twice on social is sort of a no-no. And, uh, they have really have that uh, sort of disposable dopamine and fast fashion. And that generates quite some questions around sustainability, as we all know. Um, cool thing, though, is that they are totally open for um, using uh, fashion that is not new. So, for example, you have an app called Depop. Uh, it has now about 30 million uh, registers, registers uh, uh, users. Uh, uh, there's already, it's quite new, uh, more than a billion turnover in the app. And what I really like is if you look at the biggest categories in, the, in, this, in this app, it's vintage, it's streetwear, it's one of a kind or uh, Y2K, like uh, from the, uh, the end of the 90s, uh, the, the stuff that... Uh, um, Destiny Child and so on were, were wearing. So this is really cool that they sort of also reinvent that part of the fashion industry. 
At the other hand, uh, inequalities with society, environment, uh, but also technology disappearing jobs means that um, they face quite significant challenges, though, these Gen Z, and they often feel misunderstood. And through this fashion and, uh, and showing themselves the way they want to show themselves, uh, they sort of try to carve in their part uh, uh, in, in society. And this brings me to some key insights. Um, so they, I, they start to dictate trends through TikTok, Snapchat, and, but also all the games or uh, dark social like WhatsApp. And people like this, uh, like James, like uh, Lil Nas, uh, Greta, Billie Eilish, they are doing it. 160 million followers amongst them. They are sort of showing uh, uh, their the way forward. And these things, they have big plans and they help people where they can, they are switched on, but they're also willing to unplug. They are gamers, as already been said, but they're also changing social. They're not all about participating, but also just uh, getting, being entertained together. And they really prefer these young, trendy, funny brands. And they already make up a quarter of the internet users. They're almost all in school and they almost all live uh, at home and they don't have a massive budget yet to spend. Also uh, interesting to see is that they are the, the biggest uh, ad bloggers and uh, ad blockers and VPN users because they are more and more aware of what privacy and security brings to them. They also lo love to use streaming services and subscription-based uh, uh, offerings, probably uh, through their parents. And uh, they, they use this uh, like massive and massive amount of time. Also uh, things like TikTok fashion, the, 18 billion views and counting, uh, hashtag on TikTok. And also uh, really interesting, they are, uh, because they are limited in, uh, in budget, they always look for like um, discounts and free delivery and stuff. They get their advice from bloggers, endorsements from celebs or ads on streaming, uh, streaming services. So my last part is about the virtual fashion, fashion specifically. What is really interesting, opposed to I, in IG, if you post a lot, you are shown less. In TikTok, if you post a lot, you are shown uh, more. So higher frequency means uh, uh, higher visibility. What also means that there is a, a, a massive need uh, to create new and uh, new things to show uh, to show yourself in different ways. So I don't know if you know these two people. I think maybe some of you think, yes, I know them. And some of you will go like, oh my God. Uh, but uh, these are the Island Boys, uh, a small clip. I'm an Island Boy. I'm an Island Boy. I'm going to keep it like it's all I going. Tell boy you better keep his going. So insane, right? Uh, what's less insane, if you look at the view counts on these videos, 10 million, 4 million, 4 million, 11 million, 10 million, 3.8 million, 6 million, and so on. They've posted, um, I kid you not, 811 videos. And they are a sensation. And why? Because if you swipe, they just stand out. It's, it's something you would, you would you want, you want to know more about them. And they're singing, and it's, it's, it's not pretty. But they are very nice. So, uh, it's a, it's a great example of things that are, 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 are taking off right now. Another thing that was uh, very popular this year was the strawberry dress, which was the beginning of this year. Uh, look at the hashtag on top. Uh, looked at 146 million times. Uh, and it's quite interesting, uh, small clip. I found the iconic strawberry dress on TikTok and I couldn't resist. So why is this dress so popular? Because again, like uh, the Island Boys, it really stands out. Uh, when you swipe, it's just some something that pops out uh, and it's really in your face. And this is, this is something that works on a smartphone and it works uh, with these minds that, 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 that need that dopamine uh, shots each and every time they just do a thing on, uh, on digital. And, this was uh, made by Lirka Matoshi, uh, a really, really cool uh, designer. But it also uh, put up some controversy because Tess Holiday uh, wore this uh, to an award show and, and it wasn't picked up at all. 
so, so, so she tweeted something like uh, uh, that people weren't fond of her because she was uh, uh, like big sized. So you see these things work, but they have different dynamics on different moments in time. So this is also quite an interesting thing to look at. Um, Fabocious, he did something, it's really insane, a small clip. Do you want to make sneakers? Uh, and oh, it's, He said it was his dream since he's a child that to one day make a pair of sneakers. All the designs were done in a week, I think, uh, total. Yeah. Then we put everything back in 3D to show him how it would look like before making physicals. Because uh, the goal was always to sell the, the sneakers as digital first, but for people to have later on a tangible you know, reward of having the NFT, which is the these shoes, actually. Yeah. Um, so that's how it happened. It, everything was done in, in a lapse of two weeks. So really to understand, an 18-year-old created a 3.1 million digital sneaker drop in two weeks and then moved on to physically uh, 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 do uh, uh, create a version of the shoe as well so that you would, what you would uh, get got sent home. So this was his dream. And now suddenly he's creating sneakers like he is Nike. So to wrap it up, I'm almost out of time. It's four things uh, for the Gen Z takeaways. So to me, the first thing is, and uh, it's really important for brands if they want to get into this space, really be, be agile. The trend side cycle is extremely short. So uh, experiment, mix and match styles, don't be afraid, uh, do collabs. Secondly, listen and engage. So don't only um, try to do your own thing, uh, like I, I, you launch a new product, but also uh, engage the audience on the things they are already doing. So join uh, the commenting, uh, join this, the discussion uh, of the community. Three, really rewrite the rule book. You're used to doing things the way you, you were doing them. But if you look at these island boys and strawberry dress and all these things, um, it's, it's, it's like viral whims and creativity, it's really gone wild. And uh, I, I, I say, make use of it. And uh, last but not least, uh, same examples again, make big statements. Um, nuance, uh, yeah, it, it's, maybe it's sad, but it doesn't work on Gen Z. Bold design and that quickly attracts the attention uh, on these small screens, that is something that really, really work, works well. So uh, that was it. Um, maybe I have time for a couple of questions, Jake. Max, that was fantastic. Thank you. We've got time for one quick question. Um, for many fashion companies, obviously, this world of digital is complex. Um, and for many people, it's, it's really quite severely unknown. You kind of gone through your approach there of, of how to get into that. But you know, for many companies, they'd see this as high risk, high investment, they could overspend, um, it could fall quite quickly. What would your advice be, you know, to a, to a fashion company that needs to pivot with this type of change at the minute? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I feel I really feel like because they give you so much room uh, to to move, you can experiment. And these experiments don't you don't have to, you know, fill fill warehouses, but you can perhaps uh, start building stuff on demand. Um, first, make a digital version, see the reactions, and then uh, build upon that, um, and really move into the space like open, transparent, uh, and, and and be willing uh, to also really listen and also use people out out of the Gen Zs and give them the credit they deserve if you work with them together. So that. To me, that will lower the threshold of getting into this space, but it is also important. I already told you, 41% of the people below uh, in the world are younger than 25. This is where we need to start working for the coming years. So you, there's no, it's not an option. You have to. Absolutely. Thanks, Max. I think just one quote that I picked up on at the opening of today's talks from Angus at High Society was, you know, fashion brands are no longer companies, you know, they are universes, which I think your talk just highlights that, you know, explicitly in terms of where people need to move to, to, to reach out to this new generation of audiences. So thank you, Max, once again, for what was a, a fantastic talk. Thank you.
If you guys have any further talks um, in terms of questions around this for Max, please reach out on LinkedIn, uh, Max Pinaz. You'll find him on LinkedIn and, and you'll get back to with any questions that you